Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right. Okay. I, I'm. I'm gonna be the guy. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna say it. I didn't watch the Grammys. And I never watched the Grammys. And I love music with a passion. I consider myself a very, very close to the music kind of guy. But I've watched the Grammys over the years. Um, just make decisions uh, in regards to giving certain people awards and not giving other people certain awards. And, you know, the snubbing just got to a point. When you couple the snubbing with putting all different types of music that don't go together in one place at the same time. And then you have like long pockets of a time where you're watching the pro the, the, the program and you don't want to hear the music no matter who you are. There's going to be stretches at a time where you have to either turn the channel or endure something you really, really don't want to hear. So it got to a point for me where it's just like, all right, now that we're in this Internet age, I can just watch all the performances I want to watch on YouTube. There's no reason to sit there and, and watch the program. So I don't even attempt to. But the thing that brought me to this channel today, the reason why I made this video is because I'm a guy who goes on Apple Music every Friday, every Thursday night, 9 o'clock, my, my time, 12 o'clock Eastern. I'm on there looking for music in three different categories specifically. African music, hip-hop, and R&B. And that's where I usually go. Occasionally, I'll have some rock music I might be listening to. Occasionally, it might be some pop stuff I can mess with. I, I, I developed a, a certain type of ear for jazz as well. Growing up, my mom worked at a jazz radio station. So it's a lot of different things that, that kind of bring me to, to my style of music. But majority of the time, it's those three categories. And the one random night, I don't remember which it was, probably around the time that Drake dropped his album and Kanye dropped his. I think it was around that same time, probably around that week or the week after or something like that. There was a guy in the R&B section named John Batiste. I think that's how you say his name, John Batiste. And I never heard, never heard of his music, didn't, didn't know of him. But, you know, he was in the R&B section. So as I do with all the new albums. I click through his stuff just like I click through everybody else's. And as I'm slipping through his music, I'm realizing that his music don't sound like no no R&B music, don't sound like anything that 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 would be in that section at all. Um, it kind of remind me of um, certain artists that they come out with, black artists that they bring out that they want to sound like they were in the 50s and 60s. They usually bring these artists out dress them up real nice, throw them on stage for a couple years. They might have two good years, and then they send those guys back to, to wherever they came from. You never hear from them again. But they always have this formula where they bring out this black dude that, that just does music that white people like. Let's just keep it real. He doesn't do white people music. He does black people music that white people like. It's usually music that was long outdated, music that we stopped doing back in the 50s and 60s. But that's the type of music... The John Baptiste sounds like he does, man. It's like a, a throwback, a real throwback from like the 50s and 40s. But it's not, it ain't got no soul to it. Like, as you listen to it, you, you're clicking through it, and it's like it's, it's, it's no soul in it at all. There's no groove to it. There's no vibe. It, it sounds like some folk music that, that only white people going to vibe with if they're from a place that I'm not from, listening to music that I don't listen to. But he's in this R&B section, and he's got all the bells and whistles. You go on I, iTunes, and, and they have, like, little different types of specific, uh, detailed uh, bells and whistles is basically what I'm going to say, graphics and all that. And he had the whole nine. And I'm like, okay, this guy is obviously coming out of nowhere. I look for some of his previous music. I don't remember what I came up with, but it wasn't a whole lot. So I'm like, this dude just came out of nowhere. He makes music that I can't I can't listen to a single song. 
all of it is not for me. The music is subjective, so I'm very careful to say when something doesn't sound good to me and when something's poorly put together. It wasn't poorly put together. The production was good. The mixing was good. It, it had it had money behind it, so it wasn't going to be poorly put together. But the music did not sound good to me, I guess is what I'm saying to you. But it was very clear to me that he was a part of the machine. And we all know who the artists are that are part of the machine, man. We know who they are, and they come out with various different types of artists. They, they give you the, the hip-hop guy, they got the, the pop girl, you got the, the boy band. As I said, this formula with the black dude that does 40s, 50s, 60s music that no black people would ever listen to, but a bunch of white people would love. It's, it's that kind of thing. They got these formulas, you know. But this guy, the thing about him was I was thinking like, man, his music doesn't move me at all. Like, none of it. He's probably going to clean up in the Grammys. <laughs> like I said, it, I said it that night. I was like, I can't find a single song on here that I like. He's got all the money behind him. This is the type of music that the Grammys like. They usually try to, like, give Grammys to a guy like this to keep from giving it to a Kendrick Lamar or, or Kanye West. They'll make sure that they prop a guy like this up to keep from giving those guys those awards. Now, fast forward to today and this dude gets like five Grammys. Beat out people like Kanye West for the big Grammy. And I'm looking at the people in the comments sections and, and all the stuff and nobody knows who he is. Like no one knows who he is. You know, it's a running joke about, like, you know, how, how this guy cleaned up the Grammys. And if you don't know who he is, obviously you're uncultured. And that's, it's a joke. But, like, in real life, looking at the comment section, most of the people who were talking about the Grammys said, who is the guy who cleaned up? We don't know who he is. We ain't heard a single song from him. I just understand fully and clearly that a guy can be extremely talented and still be an industry plant or an industry project. Some, and you don't have to be lacking in talent. You don't have to be somebody that doesn't bring something unique to the game. I think that's a stereotype about industry plants that they don't have talent or that they've been propped up because of it. No, I don't think that. I'm just saying that this this individual has a very, very, very unique sound that connects to people that do not look like him. And as a result, he's tapped into the taste, I would imagine, of the Grammy voters. And that is where we come into a different conversation. Because I think what you have here is people who were voting for music to be given awards back when his sound was popping. <laughs> When his sound, the sound that he's he's duplicating now, when it was really going on, those are the same people who are voting for Grammys now. And that is why his music can sound as it does, lacking in all soul, all cadence that would make it representative of the type of music that would be common today. But since it touches into that sound from years ago when Bob Dylan and and folk singers were singing, that was the black dude they wanted to hear from, was this type of guy, John Baptiste. He was the guy that they would let in the rooms that they wouldn't let the rest of the black folks in because he's one of them in terms of image, style, and rhythm. I know this is going to be very, very controversial because it's going to be a lot of people who are going to be disrespected by the fact that I keep using white and black. But the fact of the matter is, this is how the conversation goes when you grow up in the household I did. I'm letting you in on how this, this really is. This is not a hidden conversation. This is how this goes. And it's not like this is a person who is not black. This is a black guy. And I really am happy to see anybody of color get support, take care of their families, live their dream. I saw the smile on his face. He's living a dream. Congratulations to him. I want to see him experience all that he can experience in this life. And, and if music is the way to go, go for it. No hate. But I just understand that there's some people behind this man. 
an industry, a whole industry behind this man that put him in a position to not only have the type of everything that's coming with, with these Grammys, to have all this support, because he's obviously he doesn't have it from the people. I listen to the music as, as a person who makes playlists. I've made 600, almost 600 playlists over the last seven years. I can't use a single song, not one single song on that album that they just gave that Grammy to. Not one. I can't use any of it. It doesn't sound good to me. None of it. And that's who they gave the Grammy to over Kanye. And we all know Kanye's album was very special to him. Now, what does that mean to an artist? Who knows? But I think it was special to the rest of the world, too, if you look at the numbers. to See how people were tuning in and all the stuff he was doing on Apple. Now, granted, that doesn't tell you if music is good, because I found some good music that you ain't never heard from. None of them. You ain't never seen no performance from. You know what I mean? I dig in the crates and see all kinds of stuff that pops up. People you ain't heard from in years make great music that you can put on playlists. So that's not necessarily an indicator that the person's done well. But what I'm saying is it passed the ear test for me, passed the eye test for a lot of people. It sold a lot. It did all the stuff it was supposed to do. Great performances individually. People getting Grammys. Lil Baby got his first Grammy on that album for being on that album and 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 yet John Batiste who nobody knows who he is who a playlist curator like myself can tell you ain't none of that music any good to me he's getting all the Grammys I don't think that that's a coincidence I really do believe that we are in a, in a world where you know they reward people that they prop up to give awards to certain people for reasons that are that are that are based on on things that that do not represent the culture of music that we're we're experiencing every day it doesn't even garner the type of money that they usually try to milk these artists for this is not the guy that's making all that money this is the guy that's making the music that they like listening to in their households and unfortunately they're in control of who gets what the reality is they hate all these grooves that we be listening to all these wonderful sounds that we come up with in R&B and, and rap and various pop sounds they like exploiting this music but they don't want to listen to this stuff they don't they want to listen to their folk music the same stuff that they would listen to that didn't have any soul any rhythm any cadence to it sound like somebody was just sitting on a porch plucking at a guitar that's all they want to hear and that's all they're going to give the Grammys to if they have a choice what I think needs to happen is we need to stop giving credence to the Grammys entirely. Stop letting people who were judging music when music was what it isn't anymore tell us what sounds good and what doesn't. Tell us who should be getting what and who shouldn't. I've rarely been satisfied with the results of what the Grammys have been about in regards to giving who what. I've seen them give, I'll never forget, Arcade Fire I think it was. That was some of the worst music I ever heard in my damn life. And they gave that to, to, to them over Kanye's late registration, I believe it was. This type of stuff, it's just like, man, I've watched them do this all my life. And as somebody who's especially close to music, I can tell you they hold zero credibility with me and haven't held credibility with me since Michael Jackson was holding 15 and 16 trophies on stage. That was the last time the Grammys held credibility with this guy here. So I just want to put that out there. John Batiste, I, I wish him well, all the winners tonight. I'm not mad at anybody. i just mad at the, the overall world that we're in as it pertains to music that doesn't sound good and music that isn't popular getting propped up just because someone, for whatever set of reasons, decided it should be there when we know they should not be. So um, that's, that's what I wanted to say, man. That's what I wanted to say, man. Music is subjective once again. I've listened to a lot of artists that I like make music that I don't like. And if you put a collage of their music together that I didn't like, it would be very difficult for me to say nice things about them too. And they're some of my favorite artists, so I'm not trying to point out John Batiste and say he can't never come out with a song that I like or something like that. It just hasn't happened yet. But what I'm telling you is that whole album, man, that whole album is a bunch of music I cannot at all listen to. And he just won a bunch of Grammys. That that is the bottom line, and and I just I don't know I don't know I'm just I'm, I'm I've been watching this type of stuff all my life, and it's just about time I said something. That's pretty much it. So that's what I got, man. My name is BDL44. Thank y'all for watching. I'm out.